Yeah, we have a special guest tonight, mate. One, a guy, one of the nicest guys in rugby league. I had the pleasure to play with Ross Conlon at West in 81, and then he came to the Tigers in 85, and, well, we played together for four years. We actually made our debuts together for New South Wales and Australia. How about that in 1984? It's We welcome Ross Conlon to the fence. How are you, Ross? Oh, I'm really good, Gary. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Let's just run through those stats, uh, Jimmy. 171 first grade games for Ross between 81 and 88. Uh, played for West Canterbury and Balmain. 36 tries, 524 goals, three origins for New South Wales, one test match for Australia. Also had a season at St Helens. Mate, that's a pretty good looking career. Do you ever sit back and reflect? Um, yeah, I do, mate. Yeah, often, not, not often, but yeah, you sit back and think about it and um, think about uh, how good those days were, uh, how enjoyable it was. Um, yeah, but to play eight seasons, when you look at, um, they talk about what the average span is for most folks at, uh, in first grade in Sydney. Um, uh, when you think eight seasons over 100 games, um, you know, I'm pretty happy with what, with, with what I was able to achieve. Yeah. So I only played, started playing league when I was about 15. So I was a soccer player. So I remember going, uh, played under 16s with my local club, Moreland Bar Old Boys. Um, had no goal kick and I said, oh, I can do that. Just throw me the ball. So stood it up and kicked it like a soccer player and went from there. But Roscoe, look, you, you just said they throw you the ball. You'd make a little dent in the ground, put the ball down. <laughs> you'd walk back, go to the side, do a bit of a Highland jig yeah. and you'd, you'd kick it. There was no kicking tees. There was no dirt. No. 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 You could kick it 40, 50 metres, just put a dent in the ground and kick it. Yeah, I look, I could always kick it a long way. I'm getting it over the bar was a, a different story sometimes. But yeah, I could always <laughs> kick it a long way. But you did it in those days, you know, that's what it was. I mean, go back to the days, as you said, where blokes just put their heel in the ground. Uh, you know, yeah. we had a little bit of sand from time to time, you know, every now and then they'd come. But in those early days it wasn't much. I look at the kicking tees now and, and the different types of kicking tees, you know. Um, I wonder what you could do with that sort of stuff now. Um t- things have changed, obviously, but yeah, yeah. It's interesting, Rosso, because um, you were probably around, what, 70% as a goal kicker. Do you think with kicking tees, you could add 10, 15% to that? Yeah. Isn't it funny? I was thinking about, and I was talking to this about with this in the boat the other day and saying, like, when 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 I was playing, you know, anywhere between probably 60, 65, 60 to 70% was considered pretty good. Whereas today, I don't think that would cut it, mate, you know. But obviously with the tees, I think you've got a huge advantage. I mean, as Gary was saying that... Um, um, you weren't real sure from ground to ground you go to what the mm. sand was going. I remember one of the hard things was going to the cricket ground at the end of the year. You played semi-finals because you weren't allowed to take soil onto the ground because of the cricket pitches. So they used to have sawdust, and <laughs> yeah. often yeah. it wasn't damp. So you would put the sawdust down, and before you get the ball on it, the sawdust would wow. blow away. <laughs> so you were trying to you were trying to pack it together. Um, yeah. So yeah. I mean, to me, with the kicking tees, it brings a real um, level of consistency that you know every time what you're going to get. And then, of course, the other big change these days um, is, Gary, is the grounds, isn't it? I mean, look at the beautiful grounds they play on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Roscoe, the ball too. Uh, Absolutely. I mean... We kick the old leather ball. Now it's a lot easier to kick. Yeah. I remember um, playing... And you probably you would have played that day. Remember the day? I remember the day you lost your front teeth at North Sydney Oval. Huh. Yes, my, my bottom teeth. Yes. So well, you lost well, yes. Mark Ryan. Couple of teeth. Um, and that day there was a bog. Remember the the pitch at the at the uh, North Sydney Oval? It was an yeah. absolute bog. Well, and Victoria I remember Road. Kicking, kicking a goal that day from about forty out with the old leather ball, the laces, and the ball was wet and heavy. And yeah. and I remember at the end of the game, Mark Graham from West from North the Bears came up to me and said. He said, I thought you were kidding when you had a crack at that goal. He said, I didn't think you were going to get it anywhere near the post, given how heavy it was. And yeah. the conditions, you're walking in the mud and the ball. But it was yeah. what it was, mate, wasn't it? That's what we played in. Yeah. I thought you yeah. I thought you were going to say Mark Graham came over with Gary Jack's teeth. No. no. <laughs> I think, if I remember rightly, Gary, you put him in your sock, didn't you, until we got a bit of a break and then you gave him to the trainer. That's right, yeah. 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 It's funny because um, most people listening or watching this podcast, Ross, would remember you as as the goal kicker, um, freak from the 80s. That stutter that Jimmy mentioned earlier, where was that self-taught, that little stutter before you began yeah. your run-up? And again, it came, from, it came from my soccer background, mate. So I played, at the, I played a lot at the back at soccer, so I used to take a lot of goal kicks. So I think the stutter came from the fact that you put the ball down, you go, and then in soccer, it's really important that you've got blokes moving up the field. 
So as you, as I'd come in, I'd sort of, it was a bit of a hesitation thing to see where blokes were going before I decided exactly yep. where I was going. And then when when they threw me a ball at rugby league, I thought, well, I don't know why. Just naturally, that's the way I did it, yeah. A lot of people commented on over the years, um, yeah, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do remember you landing them from over 50 metres. Is there a goal that you, you, you notched from the other side of halfway? Yeah, there was one. Um, oh, there was there was probably a couple. But the one that people remind me about the most was we playing for the Bulldogs. It must have been probably 83. And we played Eastern Suburbs at the old sports ground. Um, just on half time, got a penalty. I think we're about five or six metres, our own side of halfway. And Steve Mortimer said, look, you know, we're going to go to half time. You reckon you can get it? I, I think you possibly can. I said, and we had a bit of a breeze in our back. So I said, yeah, we'll have a go at it and see what happens. And yeah, and, and it went over. So, and, and it's funny, there's a few people come up to me over the years saying that they were there that day and saw it and thought, wow, that, was, that wasn't too bad. I have a very fond memory. You talk about kicks that you recall. I remember the, the day we played the National Panasonic Cup game in, I think, 1985. We played a Brisbane side at Leichhardt Oval. Wally Lewis, Gene Miles, Colin Scott, they're all there. It was, it was a cracker hot, like a state of origin side, and the Tigers played them at home. And I think the score was 10-9 going into the last quarter, half, probably halfway through the last quarter. And we got a penalty kick over 40 metres out on the sideline in quarter football, and we had the shot for goal. So Roscoe lined up from the sideline 40 metres out and put it not only over through the post, but over the dead ball line as well. So all of a sudden we hit the front and it's 11, it's 11, nine, which, wow. which just lifted, lifted the team, right? Cause you know, it was just, just lifted the team. And then we scored or from the kickoff. We scored from the kickoff. Uh, Scotty Gale ran away, ran around Colin Scott, ran 60 meters, 50 meters and scored under the post. Um, so little help from Gary Bridge and, and Gary Jack at the back there, but we scored from, from there. And then we went to a 16 10 lead. They never got us after that. But that goal, mm. I watched that goal and go, wow, that was just one of the best kicks I've ever, ever seen in my life. Remember I that one? Remember the game, mate, because I remember the quality of the side we were playing against. As you said, it was a Brisbane side. Brisbane it was, side. It was the Combined winner, Brisbane. man, University State of Origin side, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and I remember the fact that we were, it was neck and neck, and then we kicked the goal, and then we kicked on them, and we beat them. We put, we put a few We beat them like 20 to 10 or something. Um, yeah. And... and what about the names you mentioned, mate? How good Scott Gale, what, what a player. Gary yeah. Bridge, what a player. Um, you know, we were fortunate yeah. we had some really good players. But it did change the momentum in the game that, that, that night, yeah. yeah. And I still watch, Ross Gale, I still watch that clip. And once Gary Bridge's handball to, to Scotty Gale, he still had 60 metres to go. He still had to beat the, the, Colin Scott, the Australian fullback, to score the try. And he just put the foot down and just went, whoom. Yeah. around him and the hairs on the back of my neck still stand up when I watch him go when he scores under the post everyone runs onto the ground the kids run on Ronnie yeah. Ryan's there it's just one of the great moments of uh, 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 yeah. that, that all because of that kick went over and they went in there and we had that incredible run in the Panasonic Cup mate four years four finals I think didn't we in right. four years yeah so yeah. we were sort of a bit of the team that the Panasonic Cup team there mm. but as I said we, we were fortunate we had some great players and I think Potentially, Scott Gale was as good a player as, as I'd ever seen, mate. Um, he probably didn't achieve his potential, but, gee, he could play when he was on. He was something special. I think Jimmy... Yeah. Sorry, Adam. No, no, I was going to say, Jimmy I has said that before. I remember yeah. we played Norse, must, I think it must have been 86, in a playoff at the Sydney Cricket Ground on a Tuesday yeah. night yeah. to get into the semi-finals. Mm. And, again, we were behind, and... Scotty Gale through the ball, chip over the top, regather, goes mm. to the fullback, chip over the top. Again. Number two, yeah. at full pace, picks the ball up about five metres off the try line and scores beside the post. So it's still probably the best individual try I've ever seen. Was that, a, was that a playoff for fifth, that one? Is it... Yes. Was that yes, a playoff a play yes. for fifth of the SCG? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So those yeah, were the days we had finished equal fifth with Norths and we played Tuesday. And yeah. then we went on a bit of a run. I think we, we beat Manly the following week, Saturday. Mm. Um, and then someone, yeah, so we, yeah. Um, Ros Roscoe, just um, when, when you're lining up a kick, uh, are you aware that you could really change momentum if you land it? Do you sort of think that? If, if I can put this over, it could change things? Yeah, oh, you do, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Like Gary was saying then, you know, sometimes just at the right stage of the game, you know, you get two points, you pull back. Um, I think of another game. I think we played Cronulla. It might have been '88. Gary, at, the, at um, uh, when we were on that run again, we finished 
equal fifth that year too and just made yep. the semis and we played Cronulla maybe in a final or whatever. Mm, and yep. we were maybe down 8-0 and just before halftime, same thing, a fair way out, 45, maybe 46 out, we've got a penalty, there's no time left, have a kick a goal and all of a sudden we're on the board. It, was, it might have been 6-2 or might have been 8-2, I can't yep. remember. Yep. But all of a sudden yep. we go into the sheds having scored last and we came yep. out in the second half. Ellery Hanley turned on the... And turned on a bit of a show, and uh, and away we went. We we get ourselves into a grand final. You you mentioned Ellery Handy. Like we, you played with some great Pommy players, didn't you? Over the years, Gary Schofield, Tony Myler. Um, you know, uh, you just mentioned Ellery Handley. What Lee would Cox. they like to play with? Pardon, mate. What would they like to play with? Oh, they were great to play with, weren't they? I, I thought they brought something different to the game. It was wonderful. Like. Um, when when uh, Gary Schofield came, I think it was eighty five. His first year was 85, 86, 85. Yep. And we had we had a really good side uh, that year. Um, unfortunately, we 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 went out straight sets in the semis, but we had a good side. And he was 18, 19 years old. He was gifted. He could play. Um, Tony Myler again, he'd very different sort of player, but a strong five eight, good player. And then Ellery, he he was just uh, he he was a match winner. Um, yeah. And I think in that that um that final series that year he scored a try in every game right up to the grand yeah, final yeah. till um terry lamb got hold of him gonna, yeah, we're yeah, gonna come back we're gonna come we're gonna we're gonna come back to that a bit later if we could just we're gonna finish on your goal kicking here roscoe give me the best goal you ever landed all right so the best goal i ever landed and this is there, there might have been about three thousand people there mate we played when i was at, again at the bulldogs we played um newtown at henson park the old henson park so it must have been 83 and so the day we got there, there was a gale blowing. And I literally mean there was there was a gale that was coming straight down the field. Um, and it's probably as strong as wind as I've ever played in. Um, Chris Anderson scored a try in the corner. Um, and the thing was just getting the ball to the post. So he scores a try in the corner. So you're half a metre in from the touchline. And when I got back, I thought, well, there's no way you could go back to, to where you would normally go back to, which was probably the core line, because you're just not going to get the distance. Um, so, yeah, probably 15, 16 metres and virtually hit it sideways, had to hit it sideways because the, by the time the ball was getting to the post, um, yeah, it was almost going sideways and went over. And it was like, like yeah, for, for some reason it stuck yeah. in my mind because uh, you had to take in the, into account those conditions. So yeah. it wasn't a long kick, but it was yeah. just a kick into a, it. Was a, it was, a, as I said, a gale. Yeah. Old Henson yeah. Park, yeah, good. But, but... And that's that's great. And let me just don't underestimate. Roscoe was a very very good centre, a very good reader of the game. Um, he had the intellect as a centre. He played a lot of time at centre with with, with the Tigers. Uh, he did play on the wing for Australia. Um, and he was he was well, he was the brains of the back line. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Roscoe, Roscoe would always say to me, Jimmy, Jimmy, come here, Jimmy, come here, Jimmy, come here. So I'd be rushing over there. And Dave, him and Dave were the laziest blokes in the team. So Dave couldn't get out of a jog. Dave was good for about four yards if he was going to score a try. He couldn't run 50. Uh, so, <laughs> he was a good, he was actually a good player. Yeah, one of the best he's trainers. A very good player, yeah. <laughs> Roscoe, Roscoe was the ball player. He'd always either put either five eight or half or, or five eight or center. He'd always be looking for me, and he put me through the gap. He put me through so many gaps. It was I must thank you, Ross, for for what you did. And it was it was back really at that day. We were still sort of playing where I mean the game has changed so much today. Your centers play so wide, and they they don't come in. Whereas we played beside each other, and you yeah. often had a center that played more inside the old inside outside center so i grew up that way where you had an inside center who was more of a ball player an outside center um and so yeah we took that with us didn't we yeah how did you end up with the bulldogs ross from west uh so at the end of that that second year west mate yeah look uh, um west was struggling financially everyone was sort of aware of it so i got an offer from a few clubs and i got an offer from balmain as well that year and, and then it came down to balmain and um and the Bulldogs and probably Peter Moore was the was the thing, mate. He sort of got me in there one day, and before I knew it, I, I was signed up. Yeah, so he, he got me, and so um, headed off there for a couple of years. And I yeah. read that um, you dislocated your hip in 1983 in the semi-finals against uh, my old mob Parramatta. Was that trying to stop the Guru from scoring one of the great solo tries of all time? <laughs> that half his try happened after I went off, mate, but. It was the guru because he tackled me. So um, is that right? Yeah. So I got a little bit of a cutout pass. I went around. He came from behind me um, and and dragged me down from behind. But he's come over my shoulders. And 
I saw a still photo it one day, so I basically did the split. So I got one leg caught in front of the other and he came down on top. And, and when I rolled over, I sort of thought, oh, something's not right here because there was something that was out of place. And yeah, um, and then yeah, by the time they got me to the hospital, dislocated hip, uh, which at that stage, I don't know whether anyone had ever heard of it, but there has been a couple since then, yeah. Yeah, Chris Lawrence, he did yep. it for the Tigers. Yeah, I think, I think Michael guy Hagen, called Danny Peacock. Mm. Yeah, I think Michael Hagen might have done it. I could be wrong, but I think he did. But I remember Chris... Uh, when Chris did his, yeah, yeah. So 1984, you're at the Dogs, a successful year. You had uh, you played three State of Origins in a Test match. Yeah, had a really good year and started late because I didn't. I think I missed the first five rounds um, or four rounds because I was still getting over the hip, which happened in September. Um, came back, only played a couple of games. They picked the City side. Uh, we won that, and then um, I think probably and. and looking for a goal kicker in that state of origin, hoping I was thinking it was going to be close. So I think that was my, I mean, I don't think I was ever meant to play in the wing. Didn't have a lot of pace, Gary, did I? But anyhow, um, I don't think I ever (laughs) ever meant to play. So they threw me on the wing to kick some goals. Um, uh, Yeah, And and then I I think the same thing. So the the English came out, uh, the first test, um, England came out with a young side, Gary Schofield was in that side. So I think, again, they were thinking, well, we've got to make sure we've got some, a goal kicker. And in the first state of origin that, that year, I think I kicked four from five um, and Queensland beat us easy, but Mal kicked about one from eight, mm, I think, yeah. that night. So he did. I think they thought, well, we better go with the with the goal kicker. So, yeah. yeah. yeah and, so, and he's selling himself shortly, but they actually left out Eric Growth for this man. Yeah. <laughs> so not too many blokes can say that like, in their career. No, plenty of people that... reminded me about that over the years. <laughs> <laughs> what a... What anyway. a... Great but I mean, I, as I said, like yeah, a, a winger by default, really, because that, as, as as I think you said before, Gary, I think I was much more suited to play a little bit closer where I had the ball in my hands. But anyhow, so you played games. You play, you, sorry, Roscoe. Sorry, sorry, RG. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say when we played against the Poms in in '84, you actually marked Ellery Henley. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah so was he was like? in that side. Um, yeah, that was yeah, it. Was a good day at the cricket ground. Yeah. So yeah. when you so you were part of that Blues team that won Game Three in '84. Jimmy's often said that's that was a bit of a turning point. That game it was a, a rare win over Queensland, and from there you won '85, '86, and uh, yeah. you know Queensland's dominance was sort of over to an extent. What was that like, especially going up against King Wally? And how yeah. did he treat you? Mate, it was a wonderful experience. People used to talk about how dawning Lang Park was, but I, I love playing up there. Like it was just that noise. I, I don't know whether you heard a lot of it, but it was just so much noise when you came out. Um, uh, so I enjoyed the experience, whether it was there, even later on when Brisbane came, I think it was they came in, this, it was great to go up there. I enjoyed playing up there. Um, as I said, we didn't go real good in the first game. The second game, Gary would probably remember, was that horrendous night at the Sydney Cricket Ground where it yeah, rained mate. for about two weeks before the game. And um, while he hit the crossbar and Greg Dowling picked the ball up two centimetres off the ground, I still don't know how he did it. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, was that Crusher's so, drop kick as well? That was Crusher's that drop was kick. Crusher's drop kick where he mm. had, wouldn't have gone a meter. Yeah. Why didn't you take it? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't a drop kicker. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then we went to Brisbane. Yeah, so I suppose we had nothing to lose. We went up there and we beat them. And then uh, was it eighty four? They won the next year eighty five. The first series we won eighty five. Yeah, New South Wales won yeah. eighty five. Yeah, that, that last game eighty four was it. Give us a bit of belief that we could do it yeah. um, going at eighty five. Yeah, and then Turvey was captain the next year, and yeah, Benny yeah. was in the side. And was, um, yeah. Who'd they um who they room you with, uh, Roscoe in State of Origin to get you used to the environment? Mate, when I went up there, I was I was rooming with a guy Brian Heatherington. You remember Brian yeah. Heatherington from yeah. Bellaway? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, good bloke, good good man, Brian. Yeah. So. And what a, what about playing Test footy? What was it like standing? Was it the SCG for the Test match? SCG, yeah. yeah. So pulling on the yeah. green and gold and seeing the crest on your chest. What was that like? Yeah. Well. I mean, People talk about things when you're kids. I don't know whether you really think about it, but yeah, to get there was wonderful, mate. You know, and people say I'm a, I'm a member of those group that played one test, but I suppose that's a lot more than a lot of people yeah. played. But 100%. I do. Look, I remember. <laughs> uh, I remember it with a lot of pride. I really did. You know, um, my family's got a long, long, long history in country footy. Um, my my pop and my and my nan were life members of the local footy club. Dad played, so you know it, it was a big thing. And, and to get to that level, um, be it once. Uh, it, it was a great thing, mate. Yeah. Just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did Warren Ryan say something controversial about your selection back then that he, he wouldn't have picked you or something? No, I, I don't. I don't think he said anything publicly. I don't think it came. There was a little bit about that, but um, 
Yeah, yeah. I, there, were, there was something along the lines of, you know, looking at where, where Blake should have been, yeah. So I'm not 100% sure whether he actually did say it or whether he said it to someone and whether it got a little bit exaggerated. Um, but, yeah, um, anyhow. Mm. So, so, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we played together, mate, for um, 90, 97 games, I think, we had together, you and me. I think, and did you have... 98, 99 games for the Tigers for you, or 98 90, games? Yeah, played 99 games for the Tigers. One off my 100. 99. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. And what did it's, you get when yeah. you finished, Roscoe? What did you get, Jimmy? Because Luke Brooks, he got a barbecue on the <laughs> weekend, <laughs> which has caused quite a bit of chatter. What did you blokes get from the Tigers when you left? Oh, I don't think, I don't think we got anything. We want to yeah, no. pat in the back and thanks very much for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, all, all I got was a um, what do I get? I got I got a, I got a tray. I got, I got a silver tray. A, a very yeah, so silver tray engraved by the club. Thanks for yeah. Uh, I think I was there what fourteen years. So um, yeah, so that was that was it was nice to keep a nice keepsake, a bit better than yeah. barbecue, I think. Now I just was googling some highlights, Ross, uh, before we had this chat, and uh, I thought the first thing that pop up would be some booming conversion, but it was actually. A game from the SCG, nineteen eighty-seven, playing for Balmain in the final against Souths, and oh. David Boyle took your head off. Oh, and you, yeah, you, I, were, you were a I, decoy runner, and he he, yeah. he got you good. Do you remember that one? I do remember it actually, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it was a decoy runner, but he just must have thought, well, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get him in here, but he did get me. Yeah, <laughs> and then I you, mean, those, those you, games against Souths were always pretty interesting, though, weren't they? Yeah, oh, mm, da mm. Dave O and Mario, who else? Is yeah, there? they were they were rugged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it was Brian Hamley and, and um, Boyle, yeah, and, and Les yeah. Davidson. I think some of the battles that are between Les Davidson and uh, Les and um, Steve Walker. Roach mm. were just yeah. legendary. I mean, they yeah. used to go yeah. one another. Wow. wow. But yeah. you, you popped yeah. back up after that incident and kicked a 35 metre penalty goal. Yeah, yeah, I might have been, I might have been um, boxing. Might have, yeah, I might have been taking a bit You'd, of the time, mate. You were doing a Jimmy Jack, yeah. doing a Jimmy Jack and the fake. Calf injury. Oh, huh? yeah. They changed the rules because of Jimmy, didn't they? They, <laughs> they did. They did. Take the ball away. Yeah. Take the ball away. <laughs> They'll stop them from laying down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you recovered well from your from your broken, dislocated hip that you had. And like, and I'm just looking at some stats. Like you played 20, 21 games in 85, 27 in 86, 23 in 87, 24 in 88. Look, you, you played a lot of games for the Tigers um, after recovering from that hip injury. Yeah, I was really lucky, Gary. Um, Again, I give credit to the surgeon, the bloke that I had. He told me exactly what I had to do, and I was pretty rigorous in following what he said. Yeah. The one thing he said was that there was some measure, I can't remember, he used to have a, a test where they put dye through and they could see the blood flow to the hip, and he said, until that gets to this figure, he basically said, you can't play. And, and the reality was, he said, for some people, it may not come back, but it did. Um, and then it was able to play a lot of games of footy after that. And then even when I left Sydney, I played a couple of years, that three years in the country, captain coaching as well. So played a lot of footy after that, um, and it was great. Um, so and I, I was lucky. I sort of after that, I didn't I didn't have a lot of injuries. I had that one big one, but after that, I was pretty lucky. Yeah. So your last year at Canterbury, Ross, just backtracking a bit, was eighty four. So you didn't you didn't play the grand final that year. Did that make you hungry? And and why did you leave Canterbury? Yeah, well, I think the writing was on the wall, mate. Um, so I think maybe four or five, five rounds out from the comp, maybe four weeks out, I was dropped. Uh, I think I can't remember. Someone beat us and Warren Ryan basically said, look, you know, you're not contributing enough. I can't remember his words exactly. Peter Morden went in and then they went on and, and then they didn't lose another game. So I played reserve grade and then sat on the bench through the, the final series. So the, the writing was on the wall that um, I don't think Warren Ryan particularly wanted saw me as, as part of the future going forward there. So um, I looked for looked for somewhere else, and as I said, I had an offer from from the Tigers at the end of '82, uh, and then they came back again. Keith Barnes came back again and said, "Look, you know, we'd still love to have you over here." Um, and and I was lucky because I went over there. A lot of blokes, uh, Gary, Gary Bridge, blokes were all right around the same age, and yeah, so it was a great club to go to. Yeah, I'm not a fan, but back then, yeah, you guys, yeah, the core, yeah, Kevin Hardwick, yeah, Hemsley. Yeah, Benny. It was just a, a great core of players. We don't yeah. have that as much anymore. There's so much chopping and changing between clubs. Yeah. But yeah. back then, if you watched Balmain, you knew who you were watching. Yeah, well, as Gary said, a lot of those blokes were long-term players. Like, I mean, Kevin Harwick played his whole career there. Um, Roachy, pretty much his whole career. Gary all but those couple of years at, at Thing. Pearcey, so long-term players, yeah. blokes that stayed there. 
uh, for a long, long, long time. So yeah, and yeah. and I think the Balmain supporters they they that was good. They loved it. They loved the fact that um, yeah they they knew the players. They knew yeah. they had um, yeah. Yeah, well, we always gave 100, percent mate. It wasn't too many times where we, where we went off at half time and we were down. No, um, no, we were always pretty competitive, especially when we played at home. Like playing at Leichhardt Oval was a huge advantage for yeah. us. And now, obviously, Ciro come through too. Ciro came back from from Hawaii, gridiron in, in '85, and in the start of his career as well. So yeah, it was uh, yeah, Mike Marquito, Johnny Owens, yeah, uh, not Nobby Clark, yeah, just yeah. Ronnie oh, Ryan oh, and. Oh, and and young Paulie Bevan too. He played a lot of flow yeah. rate as well. It was a really good player, mate. Yeah, and probably was a little bit unlucky that there was always Brooke, um, Gary Bridge was in front Gary of him Bridge. and Tony Moore. Or Scotty Gale. Yeah, Scotty, Scotty Gale, Gale was very versatile. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Um, and, then, and that you, memories of that of that eighty eight grand final. Like, like you were there when Terry Lamb hit Ellery, weren't you? You were, you were right was, next to it. I was about two meters away. Yeah, I heard this. I saw it and I heard it, mate. Yeah, he didn't miss him. That's for sure. He got him. Wow. Um, it'd be interesting to see today because I think Terry would be on the sidelines for a few weeks today if it happened in the following season. But yeah, he did get him. That's for sure. Was well, Ellery looking to shift you. the ball to you? You're on the wing. Was he looking? Yeah, to... I think what happened mate, was that there was a bit of a bobble. The ball came to Ellery and a bit of a bobble, and he half turned and got it, and then went to shovel it as, rather than pass it offload. And just as he as he left his hands, um, Terry got to him, and yeah. And, and mm. yeah, got him for sure. Got him for good. Got him for sure. The touch judge hasn't seen it. Mick Stone still hasn't seen it. No. It's been thirty-four years. Yeah, no. you're right there. He, he would have. He would have been sent off these days with the bunker. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No. And, yes. and, and, and Bar still. He does. I spoke. I walked. I walked with uh, Roy Simmons there at, in Cowra there a few months ago, and, and with Terry for like six hours. He said, "Yeah, he admits he got him." I said, "Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, I got him. I'm sorry." A, but it, it, it was it was the way the game was in those days. People did it sometimes, mate. Yeah. And you, you got away with it sometimes. You didn't. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the right you, yeah. you played with you played with Bar at West and Canterbury. Just, yeah. Did you say thanks, mate, for that? You've just no, no. <laughs> I did see him a couple of years ago, but I mean, I suppose he's over that being reminded of it. He was. Yeah, he, he, look, I I played with some really really gifted um, full uh, footballers. Gary included, but you know, if you someone said to me, you know, pick your best five, Terry Lamb would be in the top five. He he was a great player and a, and a lovely bike too, competitive and you know. But yeah, um, yeah. Well, give us your other four then. You've given us one. Uh, <laughs> well, it's folks you played with. I'd have Gary in my top five. Gary would have played, um, and at any level, I'd had Steve Roach in my top five. Um, I'd have Benny Elias in my top five. So there you go, three Balmain boys and, and a. And a a bulldog, um, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just on that tackle, those bikes you... would have been those bikes because I had people say to me, "Oh yeah, some of those bikes they wouldn't be able to play today." Absolutely, that's, that's not true at all. Uh, yeah. like, Roscoe, were you um, were you out there when Mario Fennick bit Benny Elias? So that was in eighty. Was that 87. 86, 86, 86, 87? 86, was it? 86, 86, 86. So, 86 yeah. so then we got we got we won the playoff against North. Then we played men and beat them. Cliffy yeah. Lyons got sent off. We need Scotty Gale. Yes. And then the next week we played South Sydney. And um, yeah, and so Mario got sent off for the thing. Yeah. But just before full time, um, if I remember rightly, Gary, um, Phil Gould grabbed hold of Steve Roach and had a bit of a push and shove. And so Roachie headbutted him. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> right? That's unusual. And they, yeah. And then he was, he was cited. Up that week and then suspended and we didn't have him the next week. So who, I can't remember who we played next week, but we got beat. It might have been Canterbury. It was, I think. But did Betty did Betty make that up, Jimmy? Uh, what? Well, no, it happened. The bite. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Roberts saw it. Yeah. He did. Yeah. 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 It happened. Yeah. 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 Benny admits it happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, so very, <laughs> so Ross, Benny. <laughs> when you um. When you went to the eighty-eight grand final, did, did you know that was going to be your last game for the Tigers? Yeah, I was. I was fairly sure, mate. I was at the age, so I was. I was turning just about to turn thirty. Um, I'd had a great time, eight years. Like Gary, Gary comes from Wollongong. I come from the Northern Rivers. Always wanted to go back home. Always wanted to go back to the country. And I actually always wanted to go back and captain coach too. Wanted to go back and play a bit of footy in the country, which I loved. Um, could I have got another year at the Tigers? I probably could have, but I remember going and seeing Keith Barnes and saying, look, mate, I think this is going to be enough. I think I'll I'll finish up at the end of this year. 
And, and so it was good. It was a bit of a mutual thing. And he said, that's great. And I appreciate what you've done for the club over, over four years and nearly 100 games. Um, mm. And then, yeah, sailed off into the sunset. I'm like, yeah. Mm. Uh, where'd mm. you go from there? St. Helens after country footy? No, no, I went to St. Helens in 84. Oh, that was before, Randy wasn't it? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so that was it. So when I left Sydney, I went to um, Casino up near Lismore, yep. Group 1, and coached the Casino Cougars for three years. Um, won a premiership there in 1990, which was wonderful, great for the town, and that's the last mm. time they won a premiership. So they've got a bit of a 30-year drought now since then. What was it um, like? I always worry about... You know, first grade stars going back to the country. Maybe there's a few uh, scalp hunters out there. Did you ever have any trouble? Yeah, there were, and there were, and there were people, and, and you copped a little bit of stick from the from the sideline, of course. But there were blokes that were looking. But you know, I I, had, I played on a pretty good side there. I had a couple of pretty tough blokes playing with me. Casino boys are pretty tough, mm. so um, there were always plenty of blokes prepared to stand beside me. That's for sure. Um, I know at the time when I was there, David Grant. If you remember, big David Grant, Gary would have played yeah. with. With yep. Granny? No, I didn't play with him. Played against him, yeah. I played against him, yeah. So David Grant was captain coach of Kyogre in the same comp. Oh. And I know that. Um, so there's a few folks thought that they'd um, get the best of David Grant. <laughs> but that was probably a mistake on their part. <laughs> it was a tough boy. Yeah. <laughs> and not, not and that was the same with Ross Conlon too. Ah. <laughs> no. We um we have a lot of English uh, viewers of the Fend. Ross, what was your St Helens stint like? What are your what are your memories I, from there? I, I had I had a great time over there. Um, the fact that um, so like like Gary and like all of us in, in our area, we were we were playing footy, but we were working. So you're fitting working with footy the whole time. When I went to England, so it's basically you're you're, you're um, a professional. You're getting up in the morning, you're, you're thinking about training, or you're thinking about recovery, and you're going and training and then playing. Uh, the footy was a really good standard. I love the footy. The, the supporters were great. They let you know when you were going good, but they also let you know when you weren't up to standard. Um, and oh, we had a great year. So I was there from, I think I went over early October, came back maybe end of February, early March. Uh, one of the great experiences of my footy career, mate, loved it. Didn't have the success that um, I'd hoped to, but anyhow, um, I think we finished, we got in the semifinals of maybe, I think it was called the John Player Trophy, the old yeah. days. Um, and then I think we finished fifth or sixth in the in the league. So yeah, but yeah, um, when I got there, the, the coach was a guy named Billy Banyan, who was a bit of a St Helen St Helens legend from the sixties. But after about three weeks, and we were running, I think we were running fifth. We went to train one night, and they said, "Oh, they've sacked him. Not not good enough." Yeah. And um, new new coach worked in, which was Alex Murphy, who is an absolute legend of the game. Yeah. So. I was coached by Alex Murphy for the rest of the season. So great experience, yeah. mate. And at that time, there were lots of Aussie bikes over there too. So played yeah. against them and caught up with them. So great experience. Yeah, yeah. I think Mal was there the year before, wasn't he, at St. Helens? Mate, probably one of the one of the mistakes is going to St. Helens the year after Mal was there, mate. Yeah, because I think they won two trophies the year before. And I was reminded a few times that I was no Mal Meninga, mate. <laughs> I'm like one day, because they, they gave us, when we got there, they gave us this lovely car with, Ross Conlon written on the side of it, St. Helens, and one bloke told me to, but he's, to get back in my car and get back to Australia one day because I was no Melbourne. <laughs> hey, hang on, you had a car with your name down the side? Yes, which Seriously. was a bit dangerous. So Ross Conlon, St. Helens Rugby League Football Club, <laughs> wherever you went, it was there. Um, I think during the year, so I ended up with two smash windscreens, come out one more and the windscreen was smashed, so disgruntled supporter, I think, mate, yeah. I was going to say, if you, if you had a crook game, you'd keep the car in the garage, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And as I said, but uh, I, one of the blokes over there explained it to me, for a lot of people over there, for St Helens was a bit of a working class area. The footy was their entertainment. That was their, that was their day out, you know. Um, so when they paid their £2.50 or whatever, they expected... They expect you to aim up, and if you didn't aim up, um, yeah. they let you know, mate. But as yeah. I said, if you were winning, and we beat, I think it was Holt one night there, we beat him in the in the quarter final. Might have been one of the trophies things. We beat him by about fifty. Wow, God, we, we were kings that night. But yeah. yeah. Um, mm. All right, just to, to wrapping things up, what do you miss about footy in the eighties? Um. Look, I, I love the game, and I always will. I watch it, but I think it's changed. I. Oh, there's there's a couple of things that um I love the I love the the the, the Evan Flowen games in the eighties when that they talk about fatigue today but it's a different fatigue today I talk about look at the, when when you got blokes like like big forwards who are on the field for seventy five minutes or like eighty minutes like 
some of our blokes, like Steve Roach, prided himself on the fact that he was playing full games. But players could take advantage when they could see a back row or a second row or someone getting a little bit tired. So you got those smaller blokes into the game and, and there was a little bit more footy played, I thought. Uh, it wasn't so much about field position. Um, you know, if we thought, Gary, you'd remember, like, Roach, would often go down a short blind, you're coming out of our own territory because you'd see someone there. Um, so I think that's been lost a little bit. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, I'm not a great fan of the interchange. I think what we're down to, um, I'd love to see the game go back to four replacements. If you get four replacements, then that's enough. Um, <laughs> Before you go, mate, who is, um, who's your favourite goal kicker these days? Who's the, who's the best one to watch? Oh, mate, um, looking at him today, look, Nathan Cleary is very, very good. Um, they're so, it's so, just, they're, they're, the way they practice and stuff now, um, Cleary is good. Adam Reynolds, mate, is still, if, if he's not up there in the top one or two, he's still, he's very close. So, yeah, I, and, and since I finished, I, I think the best goal kicker I've seen since I finished um, was the Kiwi, I don't remember his name now, um, Daryl Halligan, mate. Yeah, he, Halligan. he was... And if you look at him, he had a really simple, you know, sometimes now, even now, even though I'm old and past it, folks get me and say, oh, look, we've got this kid. Can you come and have a, just have a look at him and help him with his goal kick? And they've got about 25 moving parts in their kick. They lift their knee up, then they wave their arm, then they step back. And and you look at Daryl Halligan, he was placed the ball five or six steps back, same every time, simple procedure. And he didn't miss a lot of goals, man. He was was a good, 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 good goal kicker. But he never had to yeah. kick with sawdust. No, no, he never had to kick with sawdust on the no, he had a, he had a kick and yeah. tee. He had the yeah. Daryl Halligan kick and tee. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. 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 Uh, that's it. Oh. Have the Ross Conlon kicking tee. Yeah, it, mate. Well, should have, should have figured that out years ago, mate. Made a fortune, <laughs> wouldn't I? Yeah. Made a fortune. You could have patented <laughs> it, yeah. Well, it's yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy, I want to yeah. cut now. Look out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ross, really appreciate you jumping on the, the fence and having a chat with us. Uh, great career and some great memories we've just discussed. And uh, I know everyone uh, would have really enjoyed it. Mate, I hope they have enjoyed it. Um, and, and I really appreciate it. I often still get stopped and people talk to me about it and say, gee, we loved, it, loved the 80s. We loved watching you folks play in the 80s. And they remember it really fondly. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a pleasure to play in that time feel a little bit honoured to be able to play in that time, but also with some of the great blokes I've played with as well, mate. So, yeah. all good. Thank, thank you, and thanks for coming on, buddy. We really appreciate it. One of the no really problem. nice guys uh, that I've played with in my career and a real gentleman, Ross Conlon. Thank you, buddy. We'll have to keep in touch now we've uh, caught up again. Absolutely. Cheers, Gary. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Ross. See you, mate. Thanks, Roscoe.